So first of all, wow, congratulations on such brilliant performances, a fantastic film. It's so immersive and so compelling, so congratulations. Thank, Thank, you, you, very Thank you very much. So George, you mentioned that you were so excited for this film because you, it's not easy to get something that you connect with so firmly. So what was it about the subject matter and the character that you connected with? I think I, I felt like I just I just knew him. In the, 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 the first audition, we only got two scenes rather than um, a whole script. And I thought I'd just come off a job, which you know was by no means war, but I'd uh, it was the most sort of physically and emotionally kind of exhausting experience I'd I'd, I'd had in work. And um, and I remember towards the end of it, in the last few weeks, speaking to my heart, like calling home and 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 saying like I'd love to tell you about this, but I can't I can't talk about it right now because I think I'm I'll sort of break, and if I break out here. I, w I won't be able to get back to it, and I think that that's that's the crux of sort of who Schofield is and how he's dealing with the war, in terms of he's he's been through such things and his home means so much to him that if he goes there in his heart and his head, you know, while he's here, he he won't be able to function as a soldier here, and that kind of quality of having to hold on to yourself just to kind of get through the day to day, is um, was something at the time I really connected with. What about you, Dean? Yeah, I'm, I was the same as George. Um, for the first, I think it was for the first two auditions, they didn't send us the full script, uh, so I only got sent one one scene, um, and it's the scene where Blake tells Schofield the funny story about Wilco getting his ear bitten off by the rat, um, and just in it was I think it was about four or five pages long, and in in them pages, I just really picked up on how warm Blake was, and and his sort of personality, and he's, he was charming, bubbly, even though he's in the middle of a war zone in a terrible situation. Um, so I took that, um, but my first interpretation of Blake was with an Irish accent. So I'll give that a go, I don't know if it was any good or not. Um, and then me and Sam, when we'd met, we sort of both agreed on that my accent was the best way to take it. I love how the film plays continuously in one shot and it's not making it so obvious, it's done so cinematically. Can you talk about how different was the filming process and challenging as well? Yeah, it was, it was completely different. Um, for this, we had to rehearse for six months before we started shooting. Um, you know, and as an actor, you don't normally get the um, luxury to do that. You just turn up on set, give it a go, and that's it, <laughs> pretty much. Um, whereas this, we had a lot of time to sort of learn about the characters, learn about their, you know, the journeys they were going to take, uh, and really just calculate how long the scenes were going to be. Uh, because the scene had to be the length of the set, and the set had to be the length of the scene, every take. Um, so a lot of them six months were just building the sets around you know, the length of the scene and um, working with Sam on the characters and, and the story and we also did a lot of training together. Mm. After six months of rehearsals and when you're finally filming, you're running through the fields, explosions are happening on one end, you're delivering your dialogues all in a continuous take of six to eight minutes. Did everything go as planned as the rehearsals? <laughs> Not always, no. <laughs> it's funny, like most, most of the time we would, we would get through it, but it's kind of, the whole thing was, you know, it's not just, I think, obviously, you know, we're the ones you see, but there's the, 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 the camera operators and the sound operators, everyone. It was this constant mutual dance, you know, that everyone's working in that environment and having to be aware of each other. And so it's funny, most takes we would get through, but you kind of knew the ones that where it had, where it had worked, where you think you kind of felt the flow. But no, there's, there's a few times, yeah, we definitely, a few mistakes here and there, and a couple of them have ended up in the film as well because they make it more alive, you know, people slips or people getting knocked over. Sam said for the six to nine minute takes, you guys did them at least 40 to 60 times. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I can't really remember like a fixed number of how many times we'd do it, but yeah, roughly that. I mean, like a, a normal filming day would turn up and we'd rehearse maybe 20 plus times before we even started rolling the cameras. Mm. And even then we'd do it 20 plus times, wouldn't yeah. we? So yeah, about 40 to 60 times. Wow. Sam is known as an actor's director, so was there a particular piece of advice that he gave you that completely changed your perspective on the role of the scene? Um, I think, well, I think Sam is an actor's director, but I also think it's got to be said how incredibly, like, how he's masterful in his three-dimensional awareness of every aspect of the of the making process, because because everything had to work in harmony with this, you know, from costume, makeup, sound, camera, everything um, but in terms of acting mm. I remember one thing that he said to me where I was kind of getting stuck on that I sort of decided what I wanted to do in a scene which is helpful to an extent because it kind of sets you on a sets you down a path but if you don't get that sort of what you've set out to do 
you sort of, I was beating myself up over it. And also, you kind of are already outside of the scene because you've decided how you want it to go. So no matter what Dean does, I'm sort of like, yes, well, what you do, I'm gonna take what this does and put it towards what I've decided this scene is. And Sam was like, no, you've got to let that go. You know, there's just, just experience it in the now and that will be truthful. And oftentimes, you know, emotion and things in life, they, they hit you later on. You might get a piece of, you know, great news or bad news and your reaction now, it sort of might not hit you until, you know, a minute down the line, an hour down the line, years down the line. Mm. So he said, you know, just trust that, that, that feel what you feel, like if, as long as you're present, what you feel in that moment will be right. And then let go of trying to orchestrate everything. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, um, there was a scene in particular for me. Um, I think it was, it was either the first week of filming or the second week of filming. And I was sort of worried about this scene because there was so much up and downs with Blake's emotions in that one long take. And it was really hard to do. Uh, and the journey was quite hard as well. There was a lot of battering and brew, you know, battering and moving around the trench at the same time. Um, and I just wanted to capture the right thing of Blake, like his personality, his warmth, even though he's, he's struggling with emotion. Um, and I was quite concerned about it, so like after every take, we'd, we'd walk back to Video Village where Sam would be, and I'd be like, am I doing it right? Am I doing Blake right? Am I doing too much of this, too less of this? And I was really concerned all day long, and then he, he eventually said to me, it's not what's right or wrong with acting. There is no right or wrong way to do it. It's what's real and what's interesting to watch. He said, and was it real? Yes. And was it interesting to watch? Yes. You know, there's so many ways an actor can prepare his lines to say the word hello, but there's so many different ways you can say it. And pretty much what George was saying, as long as it comes out naturally in that present moment, there's no right or wrong way to do it. To work on this bond on screen, how did you work on the friendship off screen? It's just a case of spending time together, yeah. basically. Yeah. You know, we used, like cooking eggs together. Cooking eggs, yeah. Dean taught me how to make a poached egg. Um, yeah. We went to we went to we went to Belgium together. You know, we we got taken on a research trip um, with the production to France to see the museums and the war graves and the battlegrounds, and it was so enlightening and important that we decided that we should go back to Belgium together. So we we drove to Belgium and we spent time doing that. And I like, I mean, it's just it's just been a pleasure working with Dean. He's a Same. really, really lovely bloke and yeah, a top George. top actor. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's 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 not hard to get on with him. Sam actually joked that uh, his characters, if they were civilians in a bar, Schofield would be on one end with drinking his wine, sitting at the bar and reading a book. <laughs> his wine has become wine. I think it was an ale. And Blake would be on the on the other end on his fourth pint with his mates. So in this scenario, in real life, what would George and Dean be doing? <laughs> Probably not far off. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. No, I think we'd be having... We, yeah. Well, we start with... We'd both like a Guinness. Exactly. We'd have we'd a like pint a of Guinness, Guinness together. packet of crisps, yeah. and then cooking poached eggs later on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'd have a Guinness together and a poached egg the, the morning after. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And lastly, this movie does feel like a time machine, so if you could go back and witness any historical event, which one would you choose? Historical event? Ancient Egypt. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to think. I couldn't think of one. That's a great one. What that's about really you? That's really good. I like well, it. Right. We, yeah, we were in an embankment the other day, you know, when, when we were back in London, and there's, there's the Sphinxes, but near, nearby another war memorial on the river. I just thought they were fascinating as a kid when we did them at school. So yeah. ancient Egypt, see the pyramids. That's quite cool. Uh, I'd do a Western. I'm a bit obsessed with Westerns <laughs> at the minute, uh, and I'd love to pretend to be a cowboy. Ride a horse, shoot up cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the chat. And like I said, you guys are fantastic. So wishing you all the best. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.